when you have a you go ahead John. I mean it was extremely disappointing. Uh, we looked uh, like we were on our heels um, from from the beginning of the game all the way until we got to halftime. Uh, give Duke credit because they did some things uh, schematically that I thought um, you know gave gave us issues. Uh, but but we need to do better. I need to do better. Um, starts it's obviously starts with me. Whatever the product on the field is, it's, it's my responsibility to make sure it looks uh, the way it's supposed to look. And, and it didn't look like that on Saturday. So uh, you know it starts with me. It ends with me. Um, you know, our kids are, are tough kids. They continue to battle and they continue to fight. So, um, you know, we just need to be better. And uh, like I said, it starts with me. Was there anything schematic about those Daniel Jones runs or was it just a guy making plays and your guys not making plays? Uh, you know, it's a combination of both always. You know, I think, um, you know, all the empty that we, that we got in the game, the no back sets that, that they gave us, um, you know, kind of vanillas you up defensively, uh, spreads you out. I mean, it was a good plan on their part and negated our strength, which is our pass rush, uh, uh, and negated our ability to get pressure on the quarterback, spread us out um, where where they had some some matchups they liked on the perimeter. And um, when when you spread, get get in those no back empty empty looks, um, you know it, it puts a lot of a lot of pressure on the D line to make sure that, that we keep our gap integrity. And uh, on two plays, obviously that didn't happen. Uh, that were huge plays in the game. Um, give them credit for finding ways to to attack us. Um, but, but, you know, uh, it was something that we should have been able to handle. Through your experiences, typically when a quarterback has successful runs like that, what's the, is there one or two common threads between what goes wrong defensively that kind of enables that to happen? Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, there, there are some common themes. I mean, you know, there's obviously the gap integrity starting up front, uh, making sure that, that we handle that. Uh, but then usually there's a missed tackle along the way. I mean, that's, that's usually part of the deal um, for, for a quarterback to take it the distance on something like that. Um, but, uh, you know, they they, uh, they they did, you know, a few things that obviously um, were a little different than, than what they've done going into it. Uh, we didn't handle it and adjust fast enough and well enough. I thought when we came out in the second half, we were much more settled down, but it, it can't take that long to, to get what we needed to get done. And, uh, you know, I can't say anything other than it was very disappointing all the way around. What, what adjustments um, did y'all make today and, and plan to make the rest of the week? You going forward? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I mean, obviously different game, different game plan, different opponent. Um, so there's some things that, that we feel like probably could carry over uh, from, from the Duke game that, that Western Carolina will see on film. But, you know, really it's, it's a new week in terms of our preparation and our plan and, and how we feel like Western's going to attack us and how we're going to attack them. So. Um, you know, there, there's, you know, there will be some carryover, but not much. Western Carolina, I don't really know much about them, but I understand they have a pretty talented quarterback. They do. Uh, what is the challenge that they present? I mean, he's very, he's very athletic. I mean, he's he's their best play playmaker. I mean, you know, the offense kind of runs through him. Uh, they're kind of a modern day triple option in, in some respect um, because he, they do have the zone read and the pitch off of it. Um, they also have some some good gap scheme. They, they do a nice job. I mean, they're, they're what they do offensively uh, gives you challenges. He played the first half of last year, and I was impressed with him. He didn't finish the game, but uh, you know he certainly gave us some fits early, and uh, you know we'll be ready for it going into this one. Yeah, yeah at, at times you all can be dominant. That second half against Georgia for the fourth quarter against Georgia Tech, it was a portion in that game, and then the third quarter or fourth quarter against Duke. So what what is going right when you all are like that? Well, you know, when when things are, are going well, um, our guys, you know, they, they're smart players. They play with confidence. They play hard. Um, and, and when they feel, you know, the momentum going, we, we've played well. You know, one of our challenges and issues continues to be a lack of depth. Um, you know, we play the same guys for, for 80 and 90 plays in, in games, and there's a lot of reasons why that's the case. But, you know, uh, when you look at uh, why things aren't always as consistent as you'd like them to be. I'm sure that's one of the reasons. Um, you know, and, and I don't say that as an excuse, I say it as a fact. Um, you know, we, we got to be able to create more depth in our in our defense, and that means we got to get more young guys playing earlier. Um, we got to get more guys prepared to, to help us. Um, but, you know, I, I think this defense has potential to be good, um, but right now it's, it's too inconsistent, and, uh, you know, we're going to continue to fight over the next two weeks to find a way to, to find that, that level of consistency. I was, just, I was going to ask about the snap counts. I think there are five guys that played 80-something snaps in more the other day. A couple played 94. Yeah. 
the lack of depth, is it, is it a combination of things, injuries, maybe some guys not coming along the way they should, or is there something else that you can kind of put your finger on? I mean, Because it that, seemed like there would be more depth back in August when we talked. Sure. It looked like you guys might have had more depth than you've proven to have so far. No, I mean, you know, that, that was definitely the plan, but I mean, there's, there's been a variety of things that um, have, have contributed, you know, obviously suspensions, injuries, um, you know, young guys feeling like, you know, the, the ultimate question that you always have to ask yourself as a coach is if when I put in the guy who's the second guy, is 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 there a significant drop off when that happens? And you know, when you talk about a Miles Dorn and a Cole Holcomb, and, and those are the guys that play the majority of the reps. Uh, right now, there is a little bit of a drop off because there is no John Smith right now with us, and um, Miles Wolfolk was the backup safety to Miles Dorn. So, you know, we're not really talking about putting in necessarily the second group guys at this point. There's some of the guys are really young, and you, you fight that battle as a coach. That um, not that you don't think they have a ton of ability going forward, because I do, but you know. In, in a seven-point game against Duke, is now the time to try it? You know, is it is it when it's tied against Georgia Tech that we throw them out there? Because we don't, we haven't had an opportunity where we had a had a lead, uh, where we feel comfortable, where I feel comfortable, um, just rolling the dice and seeing what happens. Maybe I should. Maybe I should just let it fly and, and see what happens. But um, and, and I mean that sincerely. I mean. You know where where sometimes you script it out, and no matter what the situation is, I'm putting this guy in on the third series of the game, no matter what. Um, we just haven't had that luxury, and our margin for error is so small. Uh, you kind of ride your ones for a long time, and uh, you know. So when the questions asked about finishing games, you know you'd like to have more guys playing because it certainly would like make it a lot easier to finish games. So in that case, is there nothing Last you one. can really do about it? No, I mean, certainly continue to develop your young guys. Uh, you you. You continue to um, hope that, that the, the freshmen and sophomores that haven't had a lot of playing experience continue to get better every week, uh, which has been the case. And uh, you know, from from a coaching perspective, there's a little bit of a leap of faith. You know, put a guy out there that hasn't really been out there, and and uh, trust the fact that that he knows that when the lights come on, he's got to be ready to roll. And uh, you know, we, we got two weeks. Hopefully, this is a game where where my plan is that, that we play some guys in it um, going into it. That's the plan, and and, and we'll see. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.